Hello, my name is Adam Manuel, and in this video, um, this week we're going to go a little deeper into detail of what I basically spoke about last week, and that is the idea of sharecropping in the postbellum period. So for this week, we're going to look at an individual that lived and worked as a sharecropper during the postbellum period, and his name was Henry Blake. Henry Blake, in his um, account of life during that time period, states that he was born in uh, March of 1863, so he was very young when obviously slavery eventually did end. Um, however, his father was had definitely experienced with the um, concept of slavery, and he describes in his account that after freedom, uh, him and his father went to go work um, as a share cropper and eventually they were able to work up to renting and um, having a little more uh, economic stability in their lives but in his account he off, he discusses how uh, you were often cheated by the individual who um, was over you he, he describes it as um, we couldn't make nothing uh, half went to the other man so that shows that financially most of what they made went to the um, owner of the land and they were just scraping by um, another account information that he states is that he there's no itemized list you had to trust what the uh, owner of the land was explaining to you or so you had to take in many accounts what they were saying to tr to, as truth and he even says in here that if you didn't know understand money and even if you took uh, kept your own record accounts um, many times these public men owning the land would try to take advantage of you and you were still and you were to just agree with it because there's really nothing they could do about it um, he also states that it would keep you in debt because you never made enough money no matter how hard you worked or how how m much you grew there's really no way to uh, get ahead and this goes perfectly what I discussed last week when I stated how these ideas the anti-enticing laws the contracts and the control of these um, landowners so the anti-enticing laws obviously would keep um, poor sharecroppers from going where the more money is and he states it in here when he says uh, they would keep you uh, you better not try to run or go to s someone else or break your contract because it would make them mad and you get in a lot of trouble and that's proof from the anti-enticing laws that such um, actions were taking place. Uh, the contracts, once again, he discusses how you can't really go breaking these contracts because um, it hurts things. So this is definitely proof that in this period of postbellum South, uh, postbellum North America, um, slavery, or not slavery, slavery had ended and they were trying to come up with a new way of controlling these I mean, not all sharecroppers were black, but a good majority of them were. And it can be seen from these actions that they were still trying to control them and keep them from actually succeeding and making something of themselves. And it was their, the, basically the South's last-ditch effort to have some form of slavery. And in, in some senses, you can almost title it as like a paid servitude. They were basically servants because they had the contract they couldn't move anywhere and they were tied to the land but they still ha felt some kind of degree of freedom because they were in fact making money but it just was never enough to actually make anything as and as I talked about last week in my blog um, there was a, de a degree of economic change there were people going up the ladder from a lowly um, servant 
of sorts to an individual that some actually some African Americans did did end up owning their own land, but it was never a to a degree that these individuals wanted. Um, so I look forward to your responses and I can't wait to read everyone else's.